for the benefit of persons who don't understand English, this morning we are still in our tour in Dockerland and we came to meet our own mother who is busy plucking a particular leaf that in Dockey thinking and understanding is a very important leaf. So we decided to go ask her the leaf she's plucking and the essence of the leaf so that we will learn. Because a lot of Ndoki history is not written in documents. They are in people's head. It is something we must get close so that we will hear them, so that we will be able to transfer this beautiful knowledge to the next generations yet unborn. So let's meet our mother and know what she's doing. Ndoki, mama no. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The <laughs> Dear <laughs> In essence, our mother just told us that this particular leaf is the Akazu leaf. Yes. And it's in abundance around here. It's in yes, abundance yes. around here. To every Ndoki wife, you must have Akazu planted behind your house. Yes. Because it is a leaf. Ndoki man does not joke with. This is the delicacy in Ndoki. Yes. Akazu. Yes. Follow Akazu as some call it. Mm. Yes. It is a wonderful soup that has the Ndoki man's soul to it. Yes, sir. Because the way to a man's heart sometimes is through his stomach. Yes. So we are saying that our mama has taught us that there is 
Akazu is special to Ndoki. Yes. She has told us how she is the princess of this land. Yes. She is from Aburu Mweku. The father was used to be the Ezo Okonko. Yes, sir. Okonko, a court group in Ndoki land, was a group that when you are a member, you are revered. And the father happened to be the head of such a group. So in other words, he simply told us that he, she has a history of testing the best type of akazu soup. Koko akazu, she has tested the best of it. And she taught, saw her mother cook it from childhood to her age. So she has always seen it and has known how to prepare it for the benefit of our younger ladies, the modern day queens, who don't know this delicacy. Mommy has taught us how to cook it. We will take time to interpret what she had said and the preparation proper, proper uh, patterns of preparing a kazu. She told us that the first thing you do is to set your water on fire. After pounding what she called opo, she said in her time there was no achi or for. You pound the native thing called opo for thickney. It's a thickener. Opo is a thickener. So when you pound it, you pour it first in the water as it's boiling. Put all your meat, all fine of uh, all type of um, uh, uh, fish, all manner of meat and things you want to cook it with. They will boil for some time. You add your goosey to it. It will be boiling. There is a particular one that people call They also cook it. Now, at that level where you have prepared all these things, the molded melons can be dropped in it. It will also solidify and be ready. Then you pour your akazo that you have taken time to pound. Mommy told us that the secret is this. That every akazo you look at has a level of juice that come out of it if you pound it properly. Yes. After pounding it, you now put it so that the juice that has come out from akazo will give you the taste of Okazu soup oh, yeah, that makes it the special soup it is, it is in the oh, yeah. So Mama has taught us today on how to make Okazu. It is a series that will not stop. We will continue with this series and get to leave a message in the heart of our young ladies because we encourage Mundoki to continue to enjoy these things that have kept, kept our fathers long in age. We have people living in 100 years and above. Yes. Science has not really told us the reasons for their longevity, but we know that it could not be unrelated to the kind of food they eat. So we are calling on Ndoki people, follow our page, like us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Like. We are there to educate you on things that will bring you home, even when you are abroad. Ndoki, mamano. Yeah. Ndoki, mamano. Yeah. Ndoki, mamano. Yeah.